Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Black History Month edition of Book Buzz. My name is Betty McDowell, and I'm here with Shermaine Burleson and Meg Miller. I'll be go going over adult nonfiction. Shermaine will cover fiction, and Meg will cover graphic novels. After the presentation, I'll give you instructions on entering to win a gift card to Black Pearl Books. Um, you can see their store there. They just got a new storefront. You can use the gift card there, or you can use it online on their website as well. And I'd like to thank the Friends of the Library for donating the funds for that. With that, I'll hand it over to Shermaine to cover adult fiction. Hi, my name is Shermaine Burleson, and I'm the Head of Technical Services and Cataloging at Pflugerville Public Library. And I have some favorites for you um, of my top five for Black History Month about Black experiences and Black authors. So let's get started. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett is a stunning new novel about twin sisters and several boys' children who ultimately choose to live two very different lives, one Black and one White. So the Virgin Twins uh, have always been identical, but after growing up together in a small Southern Black community and running away at 16, um, it's just not the daily lives that shape them as different adults, but it's everything, their families, their communities, their racial identities. So many years later, um, the sisters' fates and storylines kind of intersect through their daughters. So... Um, with multiple generations of the family from the deep south to California and from the 50s to the 90s, um, this is a story about um, the American history of passing. And um, this also is a story that asks pertinent and at sometimes overwhelming questions about who we are and where we are headed as a society and looks beyond issues of race. And this novel considers the lasting influence of the past as it shapes a person's decisions, desires, and expectations, and explores some of the multiple reasons and realms in which people sometimes feel pulled to live as something other than their origins. In Every Mirror, She's Black, a novel by Lola Akamede Ankerstrom, I think. And if the author reads this or hears this, Here's this, please excuse my pronunciation. Um, but this is a debut novel about what it means to be a black woman in the world. And so these three black women are linked together in unexpected ways to the same influential white man in Stockholm, Sweden, and they build their new lives in the most open society run by the most private people. Um, so successful marketing executive Kimmy Adeyemi is lured from the U.S. to Sweden by Johnny Von London, who is the CEO and the linchpin of all these women's lives. And he works at the nation's largest marketing firm. And to help fix a PR fiasco involving a racially toned death campaign, he hires Kimmy. And Kimmy, like, uh, so she is wonderful at work, amazing, amazing. But she is a failure in love. So Kimmy's move is this last ditch effort to move to Sweden to reclaim her social life and to be like this well-balanced person. So um, then Johnny meets Brittany Ray Johnson, who um, is a flight attendant and a former supermodel that um, I wouldn't say she's a mistress per se, but her life turns into like wealth and luxury and privilege. And she's not sure she wants to be the object of this obsession. She feels like uh, Lujan may be obsessed with her. Um, and refugee Muna Saheed, she lost her entire family. She finds a job cleaning toilets basically um, being a facilities uh, worker at Johnny's office. And she's trying to establish her residency in Sweden. And she's seeking connection in the place of her own to call home. And each of these women tells their perspectives in each part of this story. And it's really nuanced and it's um, a novel that touches on important social issues of racism, classism, fetishization, and tokenism, and what it means to be a black woman navigating a white dominated society.
Digging Up Love by Chandra Bloomberg is a playful, heartfelt romance about chasing your dreams and finding love in the process. So this is about a baker who creates all this magic in the kitchen, but she runs her fa- her grandfather's restaurant in rural Chicago, Illinois. And, um, well, rural Illinois, really. Um, and although Alicia wants a close relationship with her family, she feels like she's holding off on her dreams to run this cookie shop in Chicago. And she wants more. So then a dinosaur bone turns up in her grandparents' backyard. And when paleontologist Quentin Harris arrives to see for himself, he's hoping that it'll distract him from this painful breakup he's had. And instead he finds Alicia and like these sparks start flying. But he's a big city academic and she's a home baker. And they don't know if happily ever ever is really destined to him. But she's scared to fall in love and he's trying to make a name for himself in a very competitive field. Um, with, and it gets more complicated when the press shows up at the jig site. And if love's going to prevail, the two of them may have to put their differences and their fears aside to focus on the future. Wahala by Nikki May is an inclusive and exhilarating debut novel that follows three Anglo-Nigerian best friends and the lengthy and glamorous fourth woman who infiltrates their group. So this novel could be compared to a different spin on Sex in the City if they were Anglo-Nigerian or Anglo, period. Let's just say that, um, which Sex in the City was, but you'll get where I'm going pretty soon. So Renoke wants to be happy and she wants this happily ever after after like 2.2 kids. And she's dating um, Coyote and she wants him to be this perfect person like the pedestal she's held her father up as. Um, but her friends think he's just another long line of dodgy Nigerian boyfriends. So Boo has everything that Ranoke wants, a kind husband and a generous child, but she's frustrated and unfulfilled. And she also feels guilty because she wants to remember who she is and she feels like she's lost herself. So um, then um, Simi is like the perfect one. She has a perfect lifestyle and no one knows that she has imposter syndrome and she's tempting to pack it in every day. Um, every time her boss mentions her urban vibe and tries to make her like uh, the representation of blackness or anything in the office. And her husband thinks they're trying for another baby, but she only wants the one child. Um, so then charismatic Isabella comes into their lives and she starts hanging out with each of the friends separately as well as in a group. So she gets an semi an interview in Shanghai and she goes jogging with, um, Boo. And then, um, she starts to intervene more and more in their lives and even in their friendship. And, the more and more chaos that starts to ensue between the friends, um, their friendship starts to crack. So this is a sharp modern take on friendship, ambition, culture, and betrayal. And Wahala is a common Nigerian pidgin um, English word meaning trouble. Um, and it finds these friends and can they overcome it? So this is one of my all all time favorites, and this is the 40th, 40th anniversary of the uh, Penguin Vitae edition. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful cover. But um, this is a powerful cultural touchstone of modern American literature, and the color purple depicts the lives of African American women in early 20th century rural Georgia. And separated as girls, the sisters like they sustain hope. And love in spanning 20 years, um, all these letters between Celie and Nettie and Sugar Avery and Sophia and all the people that you see in the movie, The Color Purple. This book is amazing. If you've never read it before, this would be a wonderful time to read this. But it broke the silence about domestic and sexual abuse, especially in black communities. And it narrates the lives of the women through their pain and struggle and growth and bravery. 
and it's so passionate and beautiful. And Alice Walker basically um, gave the American public a glimpse into the lives of black people and the humanness of black people and black Southern people. And um, it's just absolutely amazing. I know some colleges require it as a recommended reading, uh, but it is absolutely fabulous. And it's one of my um, top faves, even though I have so many of books that I reread over and over again. So here are the book covers, just in case you're interested um, in checking these out or finding out more information about them. But if you have any questions, um, just let us know. And thank you so much for watching my presentation. And you can contact me at um, ShermaineB at FugervilleText.gov. See you later. Bye. So now I've got some adult nonfiction for you. And some of these came out last year, but I haven't included them in past buzzes yet. So I'm going to highlight them today. And the first one is by Quinta Brunson, and it's She Memes Well. And this one came out last summer, but I totally missed it. Uh, from Comedia Quinta Brunson comes a deeply personal and funny collection of essays about trying to make it when you're struggling, the importance of staying true to your roots, and how she's redefined humor online. Quinta Brunson is a master at breaking the internet. Before having any traditional background in media, her humorous videos were the first to go viral on Instagram's platform. From there, she went on to roles on HBO, Netflix, ABC, Adult Swim, BuzzFeed, The CW, and Comedy Central. Now Brunson is bringing her comedic chops to the page in She Memes Well, an earnest laugh out loud collection about this unusual road to notoriety. Quinta applies her trademark humor and heart to discuss what it was like to go from a girl who loved the World Wide Web to a girl whose face launched a thousand memes. With anecdotes that range from the ridiculous, like the time she decided to go clubbing wearing an outfit she describes as Gary Coleman meets metrosexual pirate, to more heartfelt material about her struggles with depression, Quinta's voice is entirely authentic and eminently readable. And if you're looking for more of her, right now she is starring on a show that she created called Abbott Elementary. It's a mockumentary style comedy and she plays a teacher and it's funny and it's adorable and definitely worth checking out. Our next books, a book from Will Haygood is Colorization, 100 Years of Black Films in a White World. This unprecedented history of black cinema examines 100 years of black movies, from Gone with the Wind to black exploitation films to Black Panther, using the struggles and triumphs of the artists and the films themselves as a prism to explore black culture, civil rights, and racism in America. Will Haygood gives us an inclusive, fascinating, little-known history spanning more than a century of black artists in the film business, on screen, and behind the scenes. Colorization gives us both an unprecedented history of black cinema and a groundbreaking perspective on racism in modern America. And from Gail Jessup White, we have Reclamation. Gail Jessup White had long heard stories passed down from her father's family that they were direct descendants of Thomas Jefferson. Lord, she firmly believed, though others did not. For four decades, the acclaimed journalist and genealogy enthusiast researched her connection to Thomas Jefferson to confirm its truth once and for all. After she was named a Jefferson Studies Fellow, Jessup White discovered her family lore was correct. Pouring through photos and documents and pursuing DNA evidence, she learned that not only was she a descendant of Jefferson on, her, on his father's side, she was also the great-great-great-granddaughter of Peter Hemings, Sally Hemings's brother. In Reclamation, she chronicles her remarkable journey to definitively understand her heritage and reclaim it, and offers a compelling portrait of what it means to be a Black woman in America, to pursue the American dream, to reconcile the legacy of racism, and to ensure the nation lives up to the ideals advocated by her legendary ancestor. And this is one I just finished and I loved it. Michael Tubbs, from Michael Tubbs, we have The Deeper the Roots. Uh, Michael was raised in Stockton, California by three women, his mother, his aunt, and his grandmother. Michael's father was incarcerated uh, when Michael was a child and the family had struggles, um, but Michael was a brilliant student and his three moms gave him everything he needed to be successful. For a long time, Michael didn't tell anyone his story, but as he went on to a scholarship at Stanford and an internship in the Obama White House, he began to realize the power of his experience, the need for his perspective in the halls of power. He returned to Stockton in 2016 at the age of 26, and he became its first black mayor and the youngest ever mayor of a major American city. 
Tubbs shares with us the city that raised him, his family of badass women, his life-changing encounters with Oprah Winfrey and Barack Obama, the challenges of governing in the 21st century and everything in between. Uh, and his wife, Anna Malika Tubbs, uh, is also an author. We featured one of her books last year called Three Mothers. And it's a biography about the mothers of James Baldwin, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King Jr. And that is available at the library if you would also like to check out her book. And from Kyle T. Mays, we have an Afro-Indigenous history of the United States. Uh, this is the first intersectional history of Black and Native Americans, the Black and Native American struggle for freedom in our country and it reframes our understanding of who was indigenous in early America. Beginning with pre-revolutionary America and moving into the movement for black lives and contemporary indigenous activism, Afro-indigenous historian Kyle T. Mays argues that the foundations of the US are rooted in anti-blackness and settler colonialism, and that these parallel oppressions continue into the present. He explores how black and indigenous peoples have always resisted and struggled for freedom, sometimes together and sometimes apart whether to end African enslavement and indigenous removal or eradicate capitalism and colonialism, May shows how the fervor of black and indigenous peoples calls for justice have consistently sought to uproot white supremacy. And by Laura Coates, we have Just Pursuit. When Laura Coates joined the, Depart when Laura Coates joined the Department of Justice as a prosecutor, she wanted to advocate for the most vulnerable among us but she quickly realized that even with the best intentions, the pursuit of justice creates injustice. On the front lines of our legal system, Coates saw how black communities are policed differently, black cases are prosecuted differently, black defendants are judged differently, how the court system seems to be the one place where minorities are overrepresented, an unrelenting parade of black and brown defendants in numbers that belie their percentage in the population and overfill American prisons. She also witnessed how others in the system either abused power or were abused by it. For example, when an undocumented witness was arrested by ICE, when a white colleague taught Coates how to unfairly interrogate a young black defendant, or when a judge victim blamed a young sexual assault survivor based on her courtroom attire. Through these revelatory and captivating scenes from the courtroom, Laura Coates explores the tension between the idealism of the law and the reality of working within the parameters of our flawed legal system exposing the chasm between what is right and what is lawful. And next we have Watch My Smoke by Eric Dickerson. Eric Dickerson is the greatest player in Los Angeles Rams history and the NFL's single season record holder for most rushing yards. In 2019, Dickerson was named to the National Football League's 100th anniversary all-time team. With an elegant upright running style that produced some of football's most watched highlights, it was said he was so smooth you couldn't hear his pads clack as he glided past you. But during his Hall of Fame career, his greatness was often overshadowed by his contentious disputes with Rams management about his contract. In the pre-free agency era, tensions over his exploitative contract often overshadowed his accomplishments. What's his problem? Went the familiar refrain from the media. Can't he just shut up and run? It's time to re-examine how Dickerson was portrayed. For the first time, he's telling his story and he's not holding anything back. And by Tamiko Brown-Nagan, we have Civil Rights Queen, Constance Baker Motley and the Struggle for Equality. And this is the first major work about Constance Baker Motley. Born to an aspirational blue collar family during the Great Depression, Constance Baker Motley was expected to find herself a good career as a hairdresser. Instead, she became the first black woman to argue a case in front of the Supreme Court, the first of 10 she would eventually argue. The only black woman member in the legal team at the NAACP's Inc. Fund at the time. She defended Martin Luther King in Birmingham, helped to argue Brown versus Board of Education, and played a critical role in vanquishing Jim Crow laws throughout the South. She was the first black woman elected to the state Senate in New York, the first woman elected Manhattan Borough President, and the first black woman appointed to the federal judiciary. Civil Rights Queen captures the story of a remarkable American life, a figure who remade law and inspired the imaginations of African Americans across the country. And with Rachel Lindsay has missed me with that. Hot takes, helpful tidbits, and a few hard truths. Rachel Lindsay rose to prominence as the Bachelor's first black bachelorette and has since become one of the franchise's most well-known figures and outspoken critics. But there has always been more to Lindsay than meets the eye. And in this book, she finally tells her own story in her own words. 
In wide-ranging essays, Lindsay opens up about her experience on ABC's hit show and reveals everything about her life off camera from a childhood growing up in Dallas, Texas as the daughter of a U.S. district judge to her disastrous dating life prior to appearing on The Bachelor to her career in law and the decision to become a reality TV contestant. She also brings a sharp wit and keen intellect to weigh in on issues such as lack of diversity in reality television and the importance of political engagement, protest, and the Black Lives Matter movement. Told in down-to-earth, no-nonsense voice she's become known for, Lindsay's book of essays provides an intimate look at the life of one of reality TV's most beloved stars, as well as advice and inspiration that will make her a role model for anyone who's ever struggled to find their way in love and life. And next we have Black Joy, stories of resistance, resilience, and restoration. When Tracy M. Lewis Giggitz wrote an essay on Black Joy for the Washington Post, she had no idea just how deeply it would resonate. But the outpouring of responses affirmed her own lived experience. That Black Joy is not just a weapon of resistance, it is a tool for resilience. With this book, Tracy aims to gift her community with a collection of lyrical essays about the way joy has evolved, even in the midst of trauma in her own life. Black Joy is a collection that will recharge you. It is the kind of book that is passed between friends and offers both challenge and comfort at the end of a long day. It is an answer for anyone who needs confirmation that they are not alone and a brave place to quiet their mind and heal their soul. And by Charles Oakley, <clears throat> we have The Last Enforcer. Over the course of 19 years in the league, Charles Oakley was at the center of more unbelievable encounters than Forrest Gump and nearly as many as nearly as many fights as Mike Tyson. He was the friend you wish you had and the enemy you wish you never made. If any opposing player was crazy enough to start a fight with him, or God forbid one of his teammates, Oakley would end it. In The Last Enforcer, Oakley shares one incredible story after the next, all in his signature unfiltered style, about his life in the paint and beyond, fighting for rebounds and respect. You'll look back on the era of the 1990s NBA, when tough guys with rugged attitudes unflinching loyalty and hard-nosed work ethics were just as important as three-point sharpshooters. You'll feel like you were on the court, in the room, can't believe what you just saw, and need to tell everyone you know about it. And next we've got a cookbook um, by Chef Anto Cocaine. It's Saka Saka Adventures in African Cooking. Chef Anto and a photographer, Aline Princette, take us on a unique food journey and introduce us to the best recipes from Gabon, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Cameroon, Congo, and Ethiopia. We'll discover the main characteristics of these, dishes, these cuisines, the specialties of each region, the produce, the ideal pantry, the basics, as well as mouthwatering recipes for appetizers, main courses, side dishes, street food, desserts, and drinks. And since no one evokes the cuisine better than its daughters and sons, we meet African musicians, writers, artists, and creatives who tell stories about their favorite dishes, their family cooking memories, and what these recipes represent for them today. This is a love letter to Africa. Um, and there are a few previews for this book online if you'd like to check it out. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. It has beautiful photography and art. So we're really looking forward to getting this one in. And I have one more cookbook by Scotty Scott, Fix Me a Plate. Get ready to shake up your home cooking with the most soul satisfying dishes you've ever encountered. From hilarious and beloved chef Scotty Scott comes a deep dive into the delicious world of soul food, showcasing traditional recipes as well as awe-inspiring remixes of the classics. Learn the history behind how these iconic dishes came to be so embedded in soulful Southern culture and follow along as Scotty tells the heartwarming, sometimes side-splitting stories of how they were interwoven into his family history and childhood. This includes recipes for savory southern raised biscuits with spicy sausage cream gravy, catfish and grits, Sea Island red peas, Carolina gold rice hop and john, as well as Scotty's out of this world elevations of classic recipes like fried oyster collard green salad, duck fat shrimp etouffee, or chicken and brown butter sweet potato waffles with maple bourbon sauce. And from Emmanuel Acha, we have a logical saying yes to a life without limits. You may know Emmanuel as the host of groundbreaking videos, the groundbreaking video series, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man, or as a New York Times bestselling author, or as an Emmy-winning television broadcaster, or as a former linebacker for two NFL franchises. What you probably don't know is that Emmanuel defines his own life with just one word, illogical. 
Behind every triumph, every expression of his gifts, Bacho has had to ignore what everyone around him called logic. The astronomical odds against making it, the risks of continuing to dream bigger or differently. Instead of playing it safe, at every turn, Acho has thrown conventional wisdom, logic, out the window. Now in this revelatory book, he's empowering us all to do the same. With a step-by-step -step guide to finding our callings and shifting our mindsets, enlivened by stories from Acho's life and other illogical pioneers, Acho asks us to replace the limits set for us, and which we set for ourselves with the world of possibility. Our horizons, he shows us, are endless. Viola Davis has a new book out. And Viola is the first African American to earn an Academy Award, an Emmy Award, and Tony's. And this is her first memoir. So in this book, you'll meet a little girl named Viola who ran from her past until she made a life-changing decision to stop running forever. This is her story from a crumbling apartment in Central Falls, Rhode Island, to the stage in New York and beyond. This is the path she took to finding her purpose and her strength but also to finding her voice in a world that didn't always see her. She wrote this for anyone who is searching for a way to understand and overcome a complicated past, let go of shame, and find acceptance. For anyone who needs reminding that a life worth living can only be born from radical honesty and the courage to shed facades and be you. And this is our last book from Zany Asher, Where the Children Take Us. In this spellbinding memoir, Popular CNN anchor Zany Asher pays tribute to her mother's strength and determination to raise four successful children in the shadow of tragedy. In Where the Children Take Us, Zane tells the story of her mother's harrowing flight to raise four children as a widowed immigrant in South London. There is tragedy in this tale, but it is not a tragedy. Drawing on tough love parenting strategies, Obijulu Ejiofor teaches her sons and daughters to overcome the daily pressures of poverty, crime, and prejudice, and much more. With her relentless support, the children exceed all expectations. Becoming a CNN anchor, an Oscar-nominated actor, Asher's older brother is uh, actor Chiwetel Ejiofor, a medical doctor, and a thriving entrepreneur. The story of a woman who survived genocide, famine, poverty, and crushing grief to rise from war-torn Africa to the streets of South London, and eventually the drawing rooms of Buckingham Palace, where the children take us is an unforgettable portrait of strength, tenacity, love, and perseverance embodied in one towering woman. And in case you missed it, I've got a couple of slides here with some past books by Black authors that were featured in the last couple of book buzzes that we did. And that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for attending, and I will hand it off to Meg. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, and I handle the adult graphic novels. I have six titles to buzz for you today, starting with Wake, Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts from Simon & Schuster, out June of 1st of last year. Part graphic novel, part memoir, Wake is an imaginative tour de force that tells the powerful story of women-led slave revolts and chronicles scholar Rebecca Hall's efforts to uncover the truth about these women warriors who, until now, have been left out of the historical record. Women warriors planned and led revolts on slave ships during the Middle Passage. They fought their enslavers throughout the Americas, and then they were erased from history. Wake tells the story of Dr. Rebecca Hall, a historian, granddaughter of slaves, and a woman haunted by the legacy of slavery. The accepted history of slave revolts has always told her that enslaved women took a backseat. But Rebecca decides to look deeper, and her journey takes her through old court records, slave ship captain's logs, crumbling correspondence, and even the forensic evidence from the bones of enslaved women from the Negro burying ground uncovered in Manhattan. She finds women warriors everywhere. Using what NPR calls a remarkable blend of passion and fact, action and reflection, Rebecca constructs the likely paths of Adano and Elele, women rebels who fought for freedom during the Middle Passage, as well as the stories of women who left slave revolts in colonial New York, we also follow Rebecca's own story as the legacy of slavery shapes her life, both during her time as a successful attorney and later as a historian seeking the past that haunts her. Illustrated beautifully in black and white, Wake will take its place alongside classics of the graphic novel genre like Mar Jane Strapley's Persepolis and Art Spiegelman's Mouse. This story 
of personal and national legacy is a powerful reminder that while the past is gone, we still live in its wake. It was a best book of 2021 pick by NPR and the Washington Post. Next, we have uh, Far Sector from DC Comics out October 19th of last year. And this was on the graphic novel and comics roundtable best of 2021 list. The first murder in 500 years, 20 billion suspects, one hope. The city enduring a booming metropolis at the edge of the universe hasn't experienced a violent crime in generations. The emotion exploit has erased its citizens' full range of feelings, allowing three resident races to overlook their turbulent history and coexist peacefully until now. Rookie Green Lantern Sojourner Joe Mullen is still adjusting to her assignment to protect this strange world when a brutal murder rattles its social order, threatening to undo centuries of controversial progress. As the populace rises up against the legacy of the emotion exploit and leaders grapple for power under threat of a new war, Joe must rely on her unique instincts as a Green Lantern and as the only human in this sector to solve the crime and guide the city enduring towards a more promising future. A Hugo Award-winning author N.K. Jemison joins best-selling Naomi artist Jamal Campbell in the Eisner Award-nominated science fiction murder mystery Far Sector, which collects all 12 issues, has concept art and character designs, and an introduction by Gerard Way. Next up from earlier this month from Black Mass Studios is White, part two of the Black Saga. The team that asked, what if only Black people had superpowers, is back with the sequel to the critically acclaimed series Black. It's been three years since the world learned that only Black people have superhuman abilities, and the United States has responded by electing Theodore Mann to the presidency. The only people standing in the way of his policies to control empowered Blacks are Kareem Jenkins and his allies. And if you're interested, we do have the earlier volumes in this series. Next month in March from Abrams Comics Arts, we get The Eightfold Path from award-winning authors Charles Johnson and Stephen Barnes comes a graphic novel anthology of intercollected, interconnected Afrofuturistic parables inspired by the teachings of Buddha. Eight strangers looking for enlightenment from an ancient spiritual teacher are trapped in a cave high in the mountains on their way to his temple. One of his acolytes directs them to tell each to each tell a story that the group can learn from as they wait out the horrible snowstorm that rages outside the cave's entrance. One by one, the travelers each share a story that, unbeknownst to them, is actually a morality tale representing one of the aspects of final enlightenment as taught in Buddhism. As the wind howls through the night, they tell symbolic stories of horror, dystopia, high adventure, cyberpunk, and urban fantasy. Each story is a spoke on the symbolic Dharma wheel, and each interlocking tale gets the travelers closer to their true destiny, unveiling the future of the entire human race. This remarkable collection borrows heavily from the traditions of pop culture morality anthology series, such as The Twilight Zone, The Outer Limits, Night Gallery, Lovecraft Country, and the publications of EC Comics. Heavily influenced by the science fiction pulps of the 1950s and 1960s, this brilliant collection remixes classical social narratives such as Plato's Allegory of the Cave, Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales, and The Arabian Nights through an edgy, contemporary, yet spiritually centered lens. In the Eightfold Path, our destinies lie in heeding the lessons given in every one of these entrancing tales. Next up, we have Nita Ha's Nightmare Blog from Image Comics coming out May 24th of this year. From the team of Image's Eisner-nominated series, Killadelphia, comes a terrifying new horror series created by acclaimed Marvel writer Rodney Barnes and fan favorite Spawn artist Jason Sean Alexander. Untold evil lurks in the streets of Baltimore, Maryland, as the demon Corson surfaces from the underworld to possess a man once wronged, and his vengeance will come at humanity's despair. As gods and demons clash, humanity's fate hangs in the balance. But paranormal investigator Nita Hawes, a woman with demons of her own, has set out on a quest to root out the evil from her city. Guided by the ghost of her dead brother, she must come to terms with her own past, else she become a victim herself and join her brother in a state worse than death. This takes place in the world of Philadelphia, which we have those volumes uh, currently as well. 
And one more today, I have Wash Day Diaries coming out in June of this year from Chronicle Books. From writer Jamila Roser and artist Robin Smith comes a captivating graphic novel love letter to the beauty and endurance of Black women, their friendships, and their hair. Wash Day Diaries tells the story of four best friends, Kim, Tanisha, Devine, and Cookie, through five connected short story comics that follow these young women through the ups and downs of their daily lives in the Bronx. The book takes its title from the wash day experience shared by Black women everywhere of setting aside all plans and responsibilities for a full day of washing, conditioning, and nourishing their hair. Each short story uses hair routines as a window into these four characters' everyday lives and how they care for each other. Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith originally kickstarted their critically acclaimed award-winning slice of life mini comic Wash Day, inspired by Rouser's own Wash Day ritual and their shared desire to see more comics featuring the daily lived experiences of young black women. Wash Day Diaries includes an updated full color version of this original comic, which follows Kim, a 26 year old woman living in the Bronx as the book's first chapter and expands into a graphic novel with short stories about these vibrant and relatable new characters. In expanding the story of Kim and her friends, the authors pay tribute to Black sisterhood through portraits of shared yet deeply personal experiences of Black hair care. From self-caring to spilling the tea at, long, at an hours long salon appointment to healing family rifts, the stories are brought to life through beautifully drawn characters and different color palettes reflecting the mood in each story. At times touching, quiet, triumphant, and laugh out loud funny, the stories of Wash Day Diaries pay a loving tribute to Black joy and the resilience of Black women. So those are all the new titles I have for you this time around. Don't forget about those titles that we have buzzed before. Um, many of these already added to the library collection and ready to be checked out. And if you're looking for even more titles, um, we very much suggest that you would check out the um, Graphic Novels and Comics Roundtable collaboration with the Black Caucus of ALA. There are several reading lists and um, book lists available for you to add titles to your TBR. All right, so as promised, here's information on our gift card giveaway. So all you have to do is email your top picks from this presentation to me. Uh, my email is bettym, B-E-T-T-E-M, at pflugervilletx.gov. And it's just first come, first serve until we run out of gift cards. And again, thank you to the Friends of the Library for their support with this program. And thanks to you all for joining us. And we will see you next month with our Spring Book Buzz.